What's happening, everybody? I'm Steve, and welcome back to Junk Drummer TV, where I give my initial reactions, my hot takes, and my analysis on the drummers of today and yesterday, and maybe tomorrow if I stick around that long. I'm a professional drum teacher and a gigging musician, and I have been for the last 20 plus years. This is episode 99, uh, which means it's one before 100, and I am going to bring you something a little special for episode 100. But before I got to episode 100, I wanted to get this drummer in and this band in. He is the most mentioned drummer, and this is the most mentioned band on this whole channel that I haven't done a video about. And of course, I am talking about Puff, Mike Borden, and Faith No More. This is going to be an analysis video because they're one of my all-time favorite bands. Actually, I will be doing a top 10 favorite band episode and Faith No More will be on it. Mike Borden didn't make it into my top 10 video, actually top 11, but I'm going to do a next top 10 and I can assure you that Mike Borden will be there. Faith No More is the most underappreciated most influential band that not enough people know about. Now look, if you're watching this, you are a Faith No More fan or possibly just a fan of my channel. But we know, but dude and dudettes, Faith No More has influenced and shaped the landscape of music almost more than any band after like the Beatles and Led Zeppelin and Nirvana. Of course, they're before Nirvana. Their first record was 1985, We Care A Lot. Of course, that doesn't have uh, Mike Patton on it. Korn, System of a Down, 311. Uh, this is going to be uh, controversial. Uh, I think they influenced later Red Hot Chili Peppers. Though That list can go on and on. They're the musicians band, but they're also loved by millions of people as well. But they're not, let's be honest, they're not as popular as System of a Down or Korn, and they should be. This is a White Knight simping Faith No More video, and I'm just going to be open about it. I, I think that uh, the real thing is an amazing record, but Angel Dust and King for a Day, Fool for a Lifetime are masterpieces. They're fucking masterpieces. And if you haven't listened to those two records, Album of the Year is great too. I'm going to be honest, I haven't listened to any of the new stuff. I'm going to. I'm scared. I'm scared I'm going to be disappointed by it. But if I get to hear new Mike Borden stuff, I, 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 that's going to be great. Those records are records that have shaped bands and they will tell you there are many interviews of musicians that you love of them talking about how faith no more influenced them on just about every level now of course mike borden also uh you know how he's probably played with ozzy longer than he has faith no more has been ozzy's drummer for a long time i'm not sure if he's with him now uh he's also uh if i'm not mistaken he's played with black with black sabbath and I think he recorded with them, but maybe that was Rage Against the Machine drummer. Maybe that was uh, Brad Wilkes. So don't quote on quote me on that, but I do know that he has uh, played with Black Sabbath live. He is just great, and I hope we get this. Hope I can convince you of his greatness today. So before we get into it, I would like to remind everyone that holiday season is here on my merch page. I am doing a 15% discount on everything until the end of the year promo code christmas i've got uh, new designs and of course the dope ass junk drummer tv fanny pack so let's be aggressive and let's watch mike borden and let's watch mike Patton and faith no more and i picked this video because it is the classic lineup with jim martin in the band still and this is from the Leno Show a long time ago. This is a low fidelity video. Get over it. And we're going to be watching Midlife Crisis. <laughs> I've been listening to this record and this band consistently my whole life since I was a teenager. Man, when I was a kid, if Mike Patton would have had a cult, I'd have been in it. I might still be. Yeah, 
Okay, so uh, a little drum drum education type stuff. Uh, his setup is very unique. I think Mike Borden is the first open-handed drummer that I ever saw because I was, of course, listening to them before I found Carter Beaufort. I don't know if he's right-handed or left-handed. One of the, another thing that you see about his drum setup is how flat his toms are. Uh, I try to keep my stuff as flat as possible. Being a traditional grip player, it makes it easier when I'm coming more down and not at an angle this way uh, he, he his his drum angle is extreme now one of the things that borden did and i'm pretty sure they're playing along with tracks because there was some of that that rim click stuff that was going on i'm pretty sure that was with uh, tracks um but his toms are very extremely flat and it allows him to get a lot of power because he's not got any angle that he's going this way he's coming straight down now it's really hard to get uh, get up uh, he but making his drums that flat flat he's now making made it a little bit harder for him because he's got a lot, a lot more space between the snare drum and his toms now of course as a uh, drum teacher i get asked a lot about setup and this is what i always say have your drum set up in the most ergonomic way that you can that's still comfortable for you i'm a pretty gangly dude i'm like six one but i have a wingspan of like a six foot four person but i still play my uh, drums kind of really close in I've had people shorter than me play my drum set and felt like everything was a little too crushed in, but that's just what's comfortable for me. And that's what's comfortable for Puff. I've said this before, the 90s were great. Uh, it was a great decade for Tom Grooves, and no one done them better than Mike Borden, and I think that's one of the biggest influences that Borden uh, gave to a lot of the drummers afterwards. There's a corn song that goes like... And I, I don't remember what song that is, uh, but as, uh, as soon as I heard that, and I was like, oh, that's that's a Mike Borden lick, right? Uh, huge influence. Jim Morton back there being an introvert. Of course, Mike Patton is one of the greatest drummer or singers ever. And I'll jump on your table with my boots on to argue that point. Borden, even though he's a hard rock heavy hitter, he brought a lot of funk. Now, obviously, let's go ahead and get it out of the way. As much as they were an influence on all these great bands we love, man, like, you know... Uh, the real thing, that record with a lot of the rapping on there did start giving birth to Limp Biscuit. And for you people commenting in Limp Biscuit and mad at me about burying Limp Biscuit brothers and sisters, y'all got to move on because that band absolutely sucked. But they were influenced by Faith No More. Just because you're influential doesn't mean that you that it always gets filtered uh, correctly. Uh, but Borden always had a lot of funk and like hip hop into his playing. Uh, you're hearing it here. <laughs> sure. I don't think I've ever seen him play with a shirt on. See how flat his drums are? He gets a lot of power because he's coming straight down. Halftime, standard, big rock. Yeah. You know, Mike Patton being the greatest singers ever.
I like that. We're going to go back to there, uh, where he did like your standard, I call NASCAR drum fill, where you keep your hands going and, and go around the, the set. I'm going to bring it back a little bit. Notice he did like a, you know, just standard, digga, 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 but instead of like crashing out of it, he set that up, used that to set up like your basic build up. So it's like, digga, 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 dum, 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 dum. Like just a, just cool, subtle, nothing that's going to, you know, uh, break the bank in the technique uh, category, but just like perfection in drum in drum composition and and uh, uh, arrangement check it out yeah. anyone in the comments section we can all talk about the bands that they that they influenced and inspired who do you think they sounded like And they're impeccable live. They're so good live. Big hitter. Okay, uh, warning. Younger students and people who have not developed the muscle structure that it takes to be a big, powerful drummer. When you see Mike Borden doing this thing... You probably shouldn't yet. You need to build up to that. You know, you might you need to bench press like 250 before you start doing that. But you can actually hurt yourself. You can't hurt yourself. He's not going. Uh, yes. Yes. I've mentioned him, I've mentioned him 10, 15 times, 10 times at least. Mike Borden, one of my all-time favorite drummers. Faith No More, one of my all-time favorite bands. Before the quarantine, there was a tour that was going to be, and I could be getting this wrong, but I do know it was going to be Faith No More and Korn, and it seems like it was going to be System of a Down and maybe a fourth band, and I, dude, I was ready to drive vast distances to see that, because I have watched them play live since they've gotten back together, I don't know who the guitar player is, I know that Trace Bruance was on uh, King for Day, Full for a Lifetime, if I'm not mistaken, you know, of course, it's, you know, it's always been Roddy, Mike, Mike, and, ah, man, I'm forgetting the other guy, uh, man, they're just, they're very important to me as a musician, I am very influenced by Mike Borden. I love Mr. Bungle as well. I saw the California tour, and that was a, a, one of the best things that I've ever seen live, for sure. Uh, man, if you don't know Faith No More, there's a good fucking chance that somebody in your playlist is very, very influenced by Faith No More, and I think that's a, a important thing to do if you're a musician and you're and you're you're searching for what's good and to feed your musical force is find the bands that you love and find out why they are the way they are. I fight with my, my metal guitar player all the time. He hates the Beatles. And uh, I'm like, dude, that's fine. You can say that, but I know you love Ozzy and I know that you love Black Sabbath and the Beatles are the Ozzy's favorite band. So you can bitch about the Beatles all you want, you know, but we know for a fact that Van Halen loved the Beatles, and he's a Van Halen fan. Point being, if you love a band, watch interviews, read interviews, find out what they dig. Because more than likely, they want you to know about them because they love them and they want to spread the word. And that way you are always you know, spreading the tentacles out and finding new cool things to put in your ear holes and as musicians and music fans isn't that what it's all about so if you all enjoyed all that please give me a like comment and share uh help me feed the algorithm uh please check out my merch page remember uh uh, uh fuck what is it uh, uh promo code christmas 15 percent off uh check out my patreon if you if you dig me that much if you like me that much and remember take it from our drummer puff if you're good it gets you stuck and keep practicing until it's easy.